everybody. Welcome to Grace's Summer Quilt Camp. I am so glad you're here. My name is Becky Thompson and I have the YouTube channel Power Tools with Thread. If you would like somebody to sew with when you're in your sewing room, check out my channel, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and we can spend some time together in the sewing room. I do a little bit of machine embroidery, I do a little bit of quilting, I do a little bit of long arming, I do a little bit of everything. And I've been quilting for about 12 years now and I just absolutely love it. I was a garment seamstress for years and years and my love of quilting came about when my first grandchild was on the way. I am in the home stretch of finishing this quilt for all of these chickens right behind me, this is Lori Holt's chicken salad quilt. And I have spent the past several weeks, months, more like, <laughs> getting all of these chickens stitched out. And the rest of the quilt has 22 additional fabrics that need to be cut into the right size blocks to do all of the borders around the chickens and then they will all fit together. Since I need to get that done, I thought I'd bring you along with me. If you are interested in making this pattern, I have got a link below to this guide. This guide has been put out by Riley Blake Fabrics for Lori Holt. It was available for free on her blog and it's also available for free to you. What we're gonna cover in the cutting clinic today are cutting ergonomics, why proper cutting techniques are important, and then some tools of the trade. And throughout everything, we're gonna talk about safety as well. So, first of all, let's talk about cutting ergonomics. Cutting ergonomics is extremely important because it can take upwards of an hour or more, depending on the size of your quilt, to get all the fabrics cut out for it. And when you're gonna be on your feet, or if you're going to do it in a sitting position, as the case may be, it can take a lot of toll on your back, your legs, your feet, your shoulders, your arms, everything, your neck. It can take a lot out of you while you're doing your cutting. The general school of thought is that you need to have about four inches of space between your elbow at a 90 degree angle and the cutting surface. It's always a good idea to have either thick soled shoes or be standing on a thick mat of some sort. That's going to give you relief in your back and you want to make sure when you're cutting that your shoulders aren't up like this and one way to keep from doing that is read through the entire pattern ahead of time. I know when you first get your fabric and you're going to make your first cut into it sometimes there's some anxiety because you don't want to mess up your pretty fabric and you you don't want to waste fabric by making wrong cuts and so you can alleviate a lot of the anxiety and tension that can go into cutting by reading through the pattern first and fully understanding everything that's going to be cut, how it's going to be cut, if there are any fussy cuts, if you've got directional fabric, set those aside. Just kind of think about it and absorb everything ahead of time. And it's like reading a road map to know where you're going and where you're going to turn. It's the exact same idea. Read your instructions, read your pattern, cover to cover. And that way you can make sure that you know what to expect during the cutting process. One of the reasons that cutting is so incredibly important is because if you make your cuts incorrectly on your fabric, I don't care how straight and perfect your seams are, if your block or your strips are not the right size to start with, it's never going to end up right. And if you're making blocks like this one right here, this is from a quilt, this is a work in progress that I have going on called Woodland Wonderland. Let me pull it up close so you can see. If you're making a block like this and your cutting is incorrect, 
you're never going to get those little points right and you always want to make sure you've got enough seam allowance around the outsides for that quarter inch seam allowance right there on every point. This block could not be made correctly if it didn't have all of the cutting exactly right according to the pattern. If you are a fan of my favorite pattern designer, Elizabeth Hartman, she makes the most adorable, what I like to call picture quilts. Your cutting has got to be spot on in order to be able to get this right and get the effect that you're looking for. So let's talk about some tools of the trade. There are several different types of rotary cutters that are out on the market and there are many, many different kinds of mats. I love my True Cut mat from Grace Company. This mat is heavy duty. It's got a really good feel to it. I've been cutting on it now for several weeks and I can't tell that I have even taken a rotary cutter to it at all. So a lot of times when you cut, you may want to have a mat on a mat. I have one large mat all over my cutting table and sometimes when you're cutting fabric, you may want to trim off an edge on one side and then without moving the fabric because you've got it lined up right where you want, it's easy to just rotate the mat so that now your fabric is in the right orientation to be able to cut it this way as well. That's one of the favorite things I do when I'm cutting fabric. You want it to be easy. The less that you move the fabric on the table, the more accurate your cuts will be. There are many different kinds of rotary cutters that are out on the market. There are straight rotary cutters. This is the True Cut straight rotary cutter. And then there are also ergonomic rotary cutters. If you have wrist issues or you don't have a lot of hand strength and you want to use the strength in your arm, this might do it for you so that you're not having to use a whole lot of hand strength. The rotary cutters from Grace Company come with a special little button right here down at the bottom and I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. Grace Company also makes True Cut rulers. I love these rulers. You are guaranteed to get straight, even cuts with these. Now, there are certain things that I look for in a ruler when I'm going to purchase one. And the first thing is, can I see through it? You definitely want to be able to see through your rulers so that you can see the lines on the mat and be able to make sure that your lines are accurate and level and even with your mat. And that way, you can make sure you're gonna get straight cuts. Another thing I look for in a ruler is to make sure that it's got that extra half inch. And a lot of times people see that and they're like, why would I need a half an inch? You can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. That extra half inch is awesome if you have got to cut strips, two and a half inch strips, Maybe you've got to cut four and a half inch blocks because of the quarter inch seam allowance that's needed on each piece that's going to be sewn together. Most quilt blocks are cut with that extra half inch and it just makes it so much easier when you are cutting to be able to look at this solid line right through here to the edge of the fabric versus being able to have to look for a line in the middle between those larger one inch increment lines and that extra half inch allows you to do that. Of course, if your pattern doesn't call for the extra half inch, then you can turn it around and the numbers on these grace rulers are numbered in such a way that you can now see them whole or half coming from either direction. That's really important. Another thing that I really like about these rulers, if you are brand new to cutting, or again, if you have dexterity issues, I wanna point out these True Cut rulers have got a lip on them. There's like an edge on the ruler. See right here, there is an edge to this ruler. And that 
goes with the little button I was talking about earlier on the rotary cutter. When you first get the rotary cutter and you open it up, this is that extra little ruler guide button that I was telling you about. And you can use the rotary cutter as a standard rotary cutter and not have to use the ruler guide on it if you don't want to. You can just pull the guard back with your thumb and then use it as a regular rotary cutter and just run it right up the side and then close up the guard. You always want to be safe and close up the guard. If you're new to rotary cutting, or maybe you have had problems in the past where it'll take off somewhere and you're like, well, why did that happen? <laughs> hey, it happens, okay? One of the things you can do is pop on this guard. Now this guard right here will replace this little button, and it is so easy to do that. You just turn it upside down and pop just slide this little button right here and the button will pop off there see now look how the blade stayed intact on the rotary cutter that's because there's a little magnet in here that is holding that blade in place so you don't have to worry about your blade popping off i love this then you just take the ruler guard button and hold it over it and pop it right on so simple. And what this does is it has, I don't know if you can see it, it has a channel right there. Okay. And that channel fits on the little ridge that we were talking about earlier and will guarantee that your rotary cutter stays exactly where you want it to. So if you are new to rotary cutting and you're worried about the blade taking off on you, this will solve that problem. It fits right on there. You push it forward and you're never going to run off and have it take away from you. Whenever I'm going to cut fabric, I like to have multiple sizes of rulers handy and available to me. This is the six and a half by 24 true cut ruler. And I like this one if I'm going to be cutting up some fat quarters. Fat quarters are 18 by 22, so you will have ample ruler length to be able to cut through that full 22 inches. I also like to have the six and a half by 12, because if you're gonna cut up a pre-cut, like a layer cake or a set of 10 inch squares, five inch squares, whatever you're gonna cut, this one will do the trick for you. It's always best to have a ruler that is just slightly larger than the fabric that you're gonna be cutting, because if I was to use this on a set of 10 inch squares, sure I could, or even five inch squares, I could, but it's a little bit unwieldy. It's just easier to use a ruler that is closer to the size of the fabric that you're going to be cutting. So let's take a look at the pattern and see how I'm supposed to cut my fabrics for my chickens. Right here in the pattern is the fabric cutting guide for the fat quarter. And this little bitty line right down here, this shows me where the selvage is, that little double line that represents the selvage. So I need to make one, two, three, four, four and a half by eight and a half inch squares. And I need to make one, two, three, four, four and a half by four and a half inch squares. And then another two, four and a half by four and a half inch squares. So let's get ready to cut our fabric. Sometimes you may want to cut the selvage off ahead of time. I'm not gonna do that at this time. I want to make sure I've got the orientation of the fabric right so that I get enough squares out of my fabric because if I cut it wrong, I won't be able to get what I need. I have my selvage facing me, just like in the picture, and I need to make four and a half by eight and a half inch squares across the top. I've got two pieces of fabric here. Since I've got so much to cut, I'm gonna do two at a time to make it a little bit easier. So I am going to make sure I'm looking at where the selvage is toward me and the selvage is at the bottom of the pattern. I'm gonna turn this to the side and what I need to do is clean up this edge over here. 
when you're trying to clean up an edge, it's very difficult to do it over here on the far edge of the fabric. So you would want to start to clean up the edge with it over here. And I say over here, I am right-handed, so I will cut from the right side all the time. If you are left-handed, you would want to do this over here and cut from the left side. What I like to do is take the fabric and put it just over a line on the mat and make sure that the edge of the fabric with a line on the mat, it doesn't matter which line, I just wanna make sure I've got two points of reference, a vertical point of reference over here and a horizontal here. That's going to allow me to just go ahead and put the ruler on the mat and now I'm going to align one of the straight inch lines on the ruler with an inch line on the mat. And that's going to ensure that my ruler isn't turned one way or the other. So now I know I'm gonna have a straight cut right up this side. All I have to do is pull the guard back on my rotary cutter, and then I'm gonna take my ruler and start behind the fabric. Your hand placement needs to be well away from the edge. I use my fingers open up here, I'll cut halfway and then I'll move my hand placement to put it up here and then cut and finish the rest of the cut. So starting behind the fabric, push straight down. I'm gonna move the mat for the camera and then I'm moving my hand and finish up the cut then I have this tiny bit that is waste. As I said earlier, if you can avoid moving your fabric, you should. So now I know my fabric has a perfectly straight line right here. So what I would do now is just rotate the mat so I can cut coming from the other direction. My first cut needs to be an eight and a half inch strip. I'm on the six right here. So I'm gonna go to 12, that is six, seven, eight and a half. As I said, I'm gonna use that half, extra half inch that is on this ruler. It makes it so much easier. If you need to count them out, then do so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. My points of reference are the solid inch line is lined up with the inch line on the mat and down here on the bottom of the mat. So I am looking to make sure this is gonna give me a straight cut. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. This is perfect. Another thing I love about these rulers is that they have holes in them for you to be able to rip better. Again, I'm gonna start behind the fabric, push it halfway, hold the rotary cutter in place, reposition my hand and finish the cut and then slide it away. So now I need to cut four and a half inch strips. So on the ruler here, I'm gonna count over to the four and a half. This tells me on the ruler, if I line up this straight line right here, the four and a half inch line on the edge of the fabric, then when I cut it, it's gonna be a four and a half inch cut over here. So I'm gonna take my four and a half inch line and I'm gonna line it up up top to where I can see the fabric split in half in the little circle that I'm looking through the middle of, top to bottom. I'm gonna take my ro rotary cutter again, start behind the fabric, and push forward. That's a perfect four and a half inch strip. I'm gonna move this, and now I'm gonna do another four and a half inch strip. Now see how this one is in the middle of the, the inch line here, so it's actually sitting on the four and a half. That's okay. Now I'm gonna be using the lines on the ruler to be able to cut my next four and a half inch strip. 
So it doesn't matter where the fabric is here on the mat. On these rulers, at the inch mark, there is a little, looks like a window. And you want to see your fabric, the edge of your fabric, right in the middle of that window so that it butts up underneath that one inch line. So I'm gonna put my ruler so that the four and a half inch line is right on the edge. I can see half of my fabric through that little window, top to bottom, perfectly. It looks great. I'm gonna start from behind and push forward halfway, reposition my hand, and push through. Now on these two four and a half inch strips, I need to cut four and a half inch squares. I'm gonna take my fabric and place it so all edges of the fabric are just over any given inch line. I don't wanna to waste too much, but I want to clean up that edge so I start with a clean edge. Now this one will work best if I have got a shorter ruler because I can cut easier without having all of the ruler out here. If your ruler wants to take off on you and slide, True Cut also makes True Grips. And these are little silicone donuts that work fabulously. I have got them on the back of my rulers and my rulers, when you put pressure on them, they don't go anywhere. They will hold fast to the mat and they will hold your fabric in place so it doesn't take off on you either. I need four and a half inch cuts. However, this time I'm just gonna clean up this edge. I'm gonna put one of these horizontal inch lines right here, right on the edge of my fabric and make sure that it is straight, perpendicular to where I'm going to cut and my other edge, vertical, is right here. And that will allow me to clean up my edge. Open the guard, make your cut, close your guard. Now I'm gonna turn the mat and do my four and a half inch squares. I want to make sure that my extra half inch is over here and I'm gonna align the four and a half inch mark top and bottom so I can see half of my fabric through the little windows and I've got it straight here on the bottom. Open the guard and do one smooth cut. There we go. And the next one, I'm gonna set my four and a half inch line right on the edge of the fabric. Make sure everything is square. I've got this edge right here for reference and this edge right here. Everything is square. Open the guard, start behind the fabric, one smooth motion. One, two, three, four, five, six. I needed a total of six four and a half by four and a half inch blocks, and that's what I've got. And I need to get four four and a half by eight and a half inch blocks here. So I'm going to get my edges as close as possible here and put them over a line just a little bit. I want them both level on any given line here so I know that they're straight and they're just over and I'm going to trim up my cutting edge so I get a nice clean cut to start with. And now I need a four and a half inch cut. I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before and get four four and a half inch cuts. Three. 
excellent. There we go. Two down, 20 to go. One of the things you may need to do with any of your blocks is to square a block. And this is Penny right here, and she needs to be a 12 and a half inch block, just like the rest of the flock. Squaring up a block is really easy with the True Cut Square rulers. This is a 12 and a half inch True Cut Square ruler, and this also has that extra little ledge right there that you can use to cut. But what's nice about this one is it's got little indentations on the end so that you can run the track of the ruler guard right in there from top to bottom on all the corners. Now, I don't have any true grips on this yet and I don't want it to wiggle around on me, so I'm gonna put some on. They come in a package with 15 and you just peel this little donut off and it has, it'll leave the little middle on the paper. And it's just clear little donut and one side is sticky. And then you want to take this and put it on the back in any of these center parts. So on the back of the ruler, I'm just gonna take the grip and I'm gonna put it right in the middle of one of these squares right here. And it's clear so I can still see through it just fine. I have used these on my rulers for years. They're wonderful. There we go, that ought to hold everything in place. Down here on Penny, I'm gonna look to make sure I've got an even amount from the farthest edge of the design, which is the tail of the chick here, over to this edge. So this looks like it is one and a quarter. And over here, I have got a little bit more than one and a quarter, and you just have to also take into consideration this extra half inch. I'm gonna move this a little bit, so there's one and a half, and over here to this side is one and a half. So now I know that it is correct side to side, and I need to do the same thing top and bottom. We're ready to cut. So I'm gonna hold my hand to stabilize the ruler, open the guard, and start behind the fabric and push. Pull this to the side. I'm gonna turn my mat. It's very handy to have a rotary mat in this case. I'm gonna put it here again. Go off the edge. You don't wanna move your ruler once you get this set. That's why it's handy to have a mat on a mat. And there we go. She's all squared up. She looks great. Isn't that perfect? I love it. To change the blade in the True Cut Rotary Cutter, it is so incredibly simple. You just Flip it over and there is a little button back here and you push the button forward and that will remove and release the little button that holds this on or if you're using the ruler guide button, it'll release that one, whichever. You take your new blades and open up the package. These are true cut blades and I like to use a little magnet just to grab a hold of it and kind of scooch it off and then you're gonna want to dispose of this safely sometimes in a used medication container, that will work. You can wrap them up into several layers of aluminum foil and make them so that they're nice and thick and nothing's gonna catch on it or you're not gonna cut your hands when you dispose of this. They are incredibly sharp. You want to get another blade. I pick them up and then I will just slide them without touching the edges and get a hold of one and set it down on the table and then use the magnet that's in here to properly place the blade into the rotary cutter. If you need to move it around to center it, you can, and then you're just gonna take your little button and pop it right back in the middle and you're in business, ready to go. That was so simple. Okay, campers, that's it. 
I hope you learned a lot. I hope you got something out of this. And I hope you take a look at the True Cut system. I really like it. I love the mat. I love the cutters. I love the ease of changing the blades. And I love the rulers because I can see everything that I'm cutting. If you like this video, you want more tips and tricks for quilting and any for machine embroidery, please check out my channel, Power Tools with Thread on YouTube, and we will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.